Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lay Tools, made by a wood turner for wood turners. Today's project is going to be quite a bit of fun because we're going to make a really nice bracelet. Um, actually, I got this from the bangle guy. He sent me a couple things to work with and some nice stickers. <laughs> the bangleguy.com. So he calls them bangles, but I'm an old oaky guy, so I call it a bracelet. But as you can see from this example, they're beautiful. I mean, it's just incredible. Look at the, this is steel in here, so it's a nice metal look. It's really nice. He went ahead and infused it with some uh, plastic, some resin to make the blue there because the neat thing about this place is this guy, he'll sell you just the, the uh, bangle part, the metal part. It'll come in a little bag like so. Let me open it up here. It's real simple thing, it sleeves together, but it's very well machined. I'm pretty sure it's CNC machine that clicks together like that. You're going to turn the piece of wood that goes in there and you can get your own wood, use your own wood, that's fine, but as he said, it needs to be oven dried, not kiln dried, not room dried, not dry dried, but oven dried because if the wood will move when you finish it, if you have any moisture in your wood, it's going to crack because you're turning a piece of wood that is so daggum thin. I mean, that might be an eighth of an inch thick right there. So this is almost like a veneer on here. So imagine that if it starts to dry and shrink, it'll pop really fast, real easily. So what's really cool is like I was showing you, he makes his own blanks that then you can use. And I mean, I've been around dry wood before. This is really, really dry, but he gets some really cool burl. This one is called Afzelia burl and it has voids in it. So he goes ahead and gets a resin and he impregnates it in there and then uses vacuum to seal it and bring it in tight. So there are no voids in this. And so when you turn the blank, it's a beautiful piece of wood. So this is what we'll start turning with today. And there is a big glue up process. So we're kind of going to do the uh, cooking show thing. And I've got the second half going here and it's a different piece of burl and it doesn't have the uh, plastic resin in it, but it's still just as cool and works just the same. Now I'm putting on my step jaws on my chuck and you can see that they're steps. I mean, boom, 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 like that. And I gotta tell you, honestly, I've never really found much of a use for these because I always figured if I have a jaw the size of one of the steps, I'm gonna use it instead and I make a tenon and it works, right? Well, I'm gonna step on up to the step jaws because they're gonna be perfect for this project right now because I need to hold this ring in the lathe. And the bangle guy, he has a nice series of videos on how to make bangles the way he makes them. And I've been messing with it. And since I have different jaws, different things, I'm going to show you a little bit different way. But the thing he does is he'll expand jaws into this right here, but he's only holding it halfway. And then he starts cutting this diameter because the first step is to get this to fit. And in doing so, he has to then very carefully turn it around again and have it flush and do this so the inside cut is parallel. Well, I kept thinking about that and I thought, is there an easier way to hold this? And I thought, wow, look at the step jaws. So I'll just put this in here like so, and I'm going to gently tighten this. Open, close, there we go, Oop, wrong way. <laughs> Even reading it, I went the wrong way. And I'm holding it flush because if you look at here, this is a perfectly flat surface. When he made this, this is perfectly flat. So I don't have to worry about this going in crooked because it's going to mount up or butt up right there. So anyway, I'm going to gently clamp it down. Not too hard. I don't want to crack it, but there, now it's a good solid hold. But look down in here. See how far my finger is going in? I'm not hitting any metal until I go way past this edge. So I can come in here and do the diameter in one shot and take it off. So that's what we're going to do next. Now, I'm going to take one of the bangles and I wanted to get the diameter. You could use regular calipers, gauge calipers. Again, this is wood turning for sometimes close enough is good enough, but in this case, close enough, you gotta be really close. So that's the diameter of the ring. That's the part that's gonna slip inside the wood. So I have this here, move that off to the side. I'm gonna turn the lathe on and I'm gonna bring these points up. One is sharp, one is dull. Very important on that. And I'm only going to touch the sharp one. So I'm going to make a mark. And so I'm almost lined up there. 
There, now it's lined up over here. So that's where I want to start cutting in with the tool. And the tool we're going to be using is the Easy Wood tool, and I have the perfectly square scraper edge, scraper edge, carbide tip edge on here. So you want the one that is perfectly square because you need to make very accurate lines when you're doing this. It's not real difficult, you just want to be careful and take your time. So I'm going to pick the speed up quite a bit. And Brian, can you see down here? See this little ring I have right here? That's a um, little collet thing you can put on the shaft of your tool rest. And I locked it in. So this is perfectly set. So when I present this tool, it's just dead center. And as I move around and have to spin the tool rest and everything, I don't have to worry about the height going up and down and affecting how I'm supposed to present this tool. It's a really cool thing to put on here because we're only going to be using this and I only need to be at center level the entire time. So we're going to just come in here and gently make our cut. Just push in a bit. And I'm just doing a little bit at a time. And some neat shavings come off of here. And I could tell you right now, I think this is resin impregnated. I think he actually used some clear resin to help solidify the wood. Because I can tell by these little wispy shavings that are coming off. They look like plastic a bit, don't they? That's pretty cool. That means this will hold up really well. It won't absorb a lot of moisture, so this will last a long time. So I'm just going to come up here and test. Whoops. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. That worked. I guess I could have just gone around, huh? Okay. Anyway, so <laughs> you can be one of those days. All right. Oh, sorry. Keep bumping your camera. Don't want to make you guys seasick. Okay. I got a little more to go here. My marks are fairly accurate. There is one cool fact about this whole project that you don't understand yet, and is that the bangle guy who sells these for a living, and he knows what he's talking about wants to make sure that this fit is not tight, not really snug. And also, when you put on your right goggles, you cover more of your eyes. <sighs> Gonna be one of those days, it started early. <sighs> Let me clean that off so we can see better. <laughs> I, I gotta quit doing that. So I got a little more to go here. This is like fitting the lid of a box, by the way. But, oh, back to what I was saying, is you don't want a jam fit where it's really tight. The perfect fit is going to be one where we get it to fit to begin with, but then it has a little bit of wobble in there. And the bangle guy uses some terms that start getting into higher math for me. He talks about like four one thousandths to six one thousandths of an inch. But basically, you just want to have a wiggle. So there, that's in there. And see that little bitty wiggle right there? That is exactly right. That is perfect. So now that I have that diameter, we're just going to plunge cut all the way through and it won't take very long to get this inside exactly the way we want it. If I move my light out of my way so it won't hit me in the head. So with this tool, you can come in from the side. You can push straight. Either way you want to do this is fine. Just don't take a bunch of wood off at once. <laughs> Keep your lens clean. So I'm going to go in and make a pass all the way through and see I've still left myself some room. Oh, silly me, I'm talking about this being pregnant with plastic, I was thinking of the other blank. Yeah, of course this one's got plastic in it, it's got all that blue stuff that we were talking about earlier. Oh, okay. Note self, more caffeine before getting on camera. That is neat when that comes out. The ribbons that this stuff makes are really kind of incredible looking. <laughs> it's almost like a Christmas wrapping bow or something. <sighs> yeah, here we go. We're gonna get in and make our final cut here and make sure you're perfectly straight going in. And as a test, I'm going to take this off and see if it fits on the other side. But the very last thing I'm going to do right here, I'm just going to come in here. I know he's made this straight, but I'm just going to make sure it's really straight and smooth. You can see how this, I'm dipping the tool down a little bit and taking kind of a sheer cut, and then you can make a really light cut this way. So, okay, I know it's been going kind of long and we got a bit more to do, but let me take this off of here and we'll check the fit on the other side. Yeah, think it is. So see how we're doing here. Now here's the one side. Got a little bit of wobble. Just barely any wobble in there. You want a little wobble? 
come over on this side and we have just the same amount of wobble. That's cool. So we're going, on, going to go on to our next step. Okay, now I've got a different set of jaws on here. These are long, thin, tapery jaws. But the whole idea is they're going to expand and inside, on the inside and hold this really tight. What I have to do is we're going to cut the width now because you can see how wide the band is. And I want this though to be out away from the edge of the jaws right here because I've got to cut in this side to make this the right width. Because remember I trued up this side so it's ready to go. And I also want to get rid of this band right here of plastic because I'd rather see solid wood and then run into the cool looking plastic. Well what happens is if I don't have this spaced out here I'll hit the jaws as I trim this, right? Well how do you accurately get this on there because you could have it wobbly? Well the bangle guy made one of these up. I think I did kind of a ham-handed job at it but it's just some fiberboard or basically a uh, composite board so it's straight. And I made this up. This is about a half inch thick to match with my jaws. But what you do with it is you take this and you slide it over the jaws like so, right? When you bring this up, now this is pushing flush almost all the way around. So when I open my jaws a little bit and expand, of course you do this with the handle, not where you're doing the expanding. <laughs> expand this just lightly and they're like so. Now here's a trick that I learned. If I take this now and spin it all the way around and it spins just right, that means I've got this perfectly flush. So when I start bringing this side in, this is going to match up really good and square and fit on the bangle perfectly. You do want to take that off before you turn though because obviously that could really hurt if that started spinning. And don't ask me how I know. Now, <laughs> I forgot about this. See how easy that works? I don't have to adjust the height at all. That is so cool. I just love that. I think it saves me a little bit of extra work and, and headache I love because believe me, I caused, oops, wrong handle. Let's do that handle. Um, <laughs> caused myself plenty of headaches. Okay, now on the band, we're going to bring it up here and I'm just gonna run that edge across there and just make a, a light mark with a pencil. And that's a little bit wider where I need to be. So we'll turn that on. It's kind of hard to see. Let me turn my light on. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm using a new light. For the life of me, I can't remember the name of it. It's K&M something or K-bu-bu-bu, whatever. If you go to craft supplies online, you can find it. You've seen that little light I've been using, right? Puts a little detailed light on there. Watch this sucker. Bam. That has a lot of light. So occasionally, I mean, this looks great down here, but occasionally when Brian gets a wide shot of me, I'm probably going to go into the dark because we are literally doubling the amount of light that's on here and on here. So you'll be seeing less of me, which is probably not a bad thing. And I'm going to remember to take these off now and grab this. Okay, so here we go. Anyway, I got my mark. We're gonna start just taking this off a little bit at a time and fitting the ring on it until it just fits just a little bit loose. Again, kind of like doing the lid of a box. So we got our speed going up here. And this is gonna be kind of fun. Watch this here because this is plastic, right? Here's some shavings. Look at that. Woohoo! Kind of like a party trick, huh? Do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. Here we go. <laughs> One more. Isn't that fun? Now I'm getting into wood, so it's not as fun. But anyway, that's just so cool. This stuff is the neatest stuff on earth. There you go. Beautiful. I never looked better, did I? <laughs> okay, I'm going to work my way up to the line now. In all, all seriousness. Get this stuff up your nose. It's really interesting. Now the cool thing is if I go a little too narrow right now, I don't have to worry because this wood's not gonna be here when we finish the bangle. We only need a thin strip. So I take, a, take, take it up here and test it. And yeah, it's a little wide yet. So I'll bring this up again. <laughs> I got a cricket somewhere in the lathe today. I don't know where it is. I can hear it. There we go. Try this again. Now, if you're using a regular cutting tool and cutting into this plastic, if you rubbed your bevel too hard, you'd actually start melting the plastic and it makes the cut a little bit harder to do. So I love this. This is great coming in with carbide and just doing a clean slice. There we go. <sighs> kind of like watching paint dry in it. Oh, okay, it's on there. And that is snug, so I'm going to go ahead and take it down to that and then I'll work my way in gently. So let's go here. Whee! 
Now where it goes from the plastic to the wood, the pressure changes. So if you're pushing a little too hard, you get that. But that's okay, it doesn't hurt anything. We'll come in from the side too and do it that way. Come inside there. Whoa, that broke off. That's why we wear these. Brian, on the other hand, just went blind in his left eye. So I'll slow it down just a bit here. And again, I'm putting the point down so I can get a little finer cut. Because I don't want to tear the wood out as much. And there you can see that's what a controlled cut looks like when you're not talking and not paying attention. There we go. Gonna come in, I'm coming in as straight as I can. And I'm gonna come in one more little tiny cut. I'm taking off again the thousands of an inch according to what the Bengal guy says. So, let's test this now. It fits just, it's just a little, not enough wiggle yet. One more little cut here. And then we're gonna be ready to move on to the next step which involves a lot of glue. I think we're there. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Made by a wood turner. Four wood turners.